The first season of Outlander is my favorite for the story, but the second season is my favorite for the fashion. Now, don't get me wrong, the first season has a lot of great looks, but the second season where they take the influence of like the Dior new look and kind of meld it into the 1700s is just to die for. And one of my favorite looks from the season is actually worn by a minor character, Annalise, who is Jamie's hot ex-girlfriend. I have been in love with this dress ever since I first saw it on screen. That super vibrant pink color, kind of tones down by the mauve skirt and that little like blue neck ruffle thing that she wears. Oh, and let's not forget the little like tricorn hat kind of cocked at that jaunty angle. Like it's just such a cute look and I have wanted to have it ever since I first saw it. So guess what? Today I'm going to make it. A few weeks ago, I made the side hoops that need to go under uh, the skirt to make that super poofy, like hippie shape from that season. Um, I'm going to use those side hoops for any number of different 1700s looks um, just to give me that silhouette, but they're going to be perfect to go underneath the gown for this project. That means that we have to start off with making the mauve petticoat. This petticoat is different from any of the petticoats that I've made before because it needs to fit over these side hoops. The process for patterning this is actually quite simple. Start wearing all of your undergarments that you will wear underneath the petticoat and also remember to wear whatever shoes you're going to wear for the final outfit. Then using a tape measure, take a couple of measurements from your waist down over the side hoop all the way straight to the floor, from your waist down the front straight to the floor from your waist down the other side hoop straight to the floor and again in the back from your waist straight down to the floor. Get a helper to take these measurements for you so you can continue to stand up perfectly straight. Now we can translate these measurements into our basic pattern shape. It's basically a giant rectangle like you would do for a normal petticoat, but you kind of make these little like V cutouts into the center. So our sides end up being longer than the center front. At this stage, you also want to add a couple inches for your hem. Alternatively, if you're making a petticoat and you don't want it to reach all the way to the floor, just make sure that you adjust the lengths um, relative to the measurements that you took as far as where you want the hemline of your petticoat to reach. This gets duplicated for the back pattern as well, but because my center back measurement was a little bit more than my center front because it's going over the rear end, um, the V will be just a little bit more shallow there. Another important thing to decide when you're making this pattern is how wide you want your petticoat to be. It should be at least 100 to 110 inches um, for the circumference. I made mine 140 inches because I knew I had enough fabric and I wanted a super full skirt. So I cut the front and back panels at 70 inches, folded them in half, and then cut a diagonal line to form the V. Then those two panels were stitched together using a Mantua Maker's seam. To do this, layer two pieces of fabric right sides together with one piece of fabric kind of sticking out further than the other. Then fold the longer piece up twice to encase all raw edges. Then you can do a regular hem stitch along that edge and here's what it looks like when you're done. Notice I've hemmed the top 10 inches or so separately. The next step is to add pleats to the top edge. I'm doing about half inch knife pleats and in the front those knife pleats start in the center and travel outwards towards the sides of the body and in the back they start on the sides of the body and travel inwards towards the center. And I actually have a separate tutorial for how to get perfect knife pleats every time, which I will link in the description below in case you're interested. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a like. And if you wanna see how this project turns out, subscribe to my channel so that you can see when new videos drop. For the waistband, I cut some two inch wide strips of that same silk fabric um, just on the grain of the fabric and then because my fabric wasn't long enough, I sewed them together. 
Then I measured half an inch in from one side and marked that with a sharpie and this is going to be my stitch line for when I attach it to the top of the petticoat. So you can see here that edge of the waistband is lined up with the top of the pleats and stitched and then it gets folded over, pinned, and stitched again. To wear the petticoat it goes on over the top of the head and then I like to tie the back of the petticoat first so grabbing the waistband for the back piece wrapping it around my waist and then tying it off in a little bow and then taking the front piece of the waistband and um, making sure that it lays nice and flat across the stomach wrapping it around the waist and tying it up again. And this is the same way that you would put on any other 18th century petticoat. With the initial fit check done, the last step to finishing our petticoat is to hem it. And this is where all the work of actually patterning this garment and cutting the V's into the top edge really pays off because the bottom edge is already straight and level. And so all you have to do is roll up the bottom edge twice um, for a as much of the hem length that, that you had added to your measurements when you initially patterned and do that all the way around and then you're left with a nice even hem. And I like to baste and iron as I go during this process just to keep all the layers nice and flat and even.